isomorphisms and homomorphisms of groups. Uh, this is our lecture for today. Uh, to explain such a very important and uh, fundamental idea in abstract algebra in general, we will start uh, uh, this, uh, explaining this idea by giving a certain example of two isomorphic groups. Let's see what's happened here. If we take the group U5, and the group L. We know each of these groups. U5 is the group of unit in Z5 under multiplication. And L is the group of uh, multiplication of these elements, 1i minus i and 1. They are isomorphic. Now, what do we mean by isomorphic? Actually, in general, it means to, uh, for two groups to be isomorphic that these two groups have the same structure, same number of elements. This is uh, a structure. Elements enjoy the same property. Well, having the same structure means elements in here in this group and elements in the other group enjoy the same properties. If one element in here has order 4, then there must be one element in here has an order 4. And we can relabel these elements or uh, make a function that takes this element to this. And we will recognize what it does it uh, mean for two groups to have the same structure, same algebraic structure. And this will be demonstrated using this example. Okay. Notice here, if we say that let us relabel one as one, I mean the one in here and in here. Let, let me move to this. Relabel 2 as i. I mean, let's go here and replace this by i. Okay? And we will do it everywhere we find 2. Let's relabel it by i. And see what happens. Okay. And go back to one. We said we relabel one with one. So we will just, okay, we'll do the same thing. This is one. This is one. So we are relabeling elements only. Relabeling elements. So we, like we are doing nothing for this group U5. Just we are changing the names of elements, the shapes of elements. And see, we'll see what happens. Relabel 3 as minus i. So wherever we find uh, 3, let us replace it by minus i. By minus i. So again, we are doing nothing to, to this group. We are just relabeling. And here is one more 3. Relabel it with minus i. And relabel 4 with minus 1. So let's go here. This is minus 1. Minus 1 here. Minus 1. Minus 1. And minus 1. And let's go back to these ones also. This is minus 1. And we really appeal the 3 with minus i. And 2 with i. And 1 with 1. Now, if you look at the table, take the red color only of this table then you will find that it is the same table as as l here so relabeling the elements in u5 this way produced the group l so we obtained l from u5 just by relabeling elements what that means for instance 2 is relabeled with i. What happens for the 2? 2 square in u5 is 4. But i square in L is minus 1. And minus 1, see I'm talking here now. i, this is i, this is i. We used it to relabel 2. 2 square is 4, i square is negative 1. But negative 1 is relabeled, relabeled 4. So what I got 
2 times 2 okay and i times i like there, there is a map between them this is this is negative 1 this is 4 sorry and this is negative 1 but 4 was labeled by negative 1 okay so this is what we mean by having the same structure so relabeling here means connecting elements from u5 and l by sending them to each other one by one and every element in l is connected to an element in u u5 so we can say that we created a function sending u5 I let, let me say this u5 this way sending u5 to l this function sends every element to exactly one element and every one element in l relabeled only one element in u5 and every element in l is relabeled so the function that we are sending and we're calling here f is one to one and on two and there is one more property that we will discover okay so basically u5 and l have the same structure if we put an l in in some side and then put a mirror and then the picture of l is reflected here but the mirror will reflect one to one and will reflect two to i and three to minus i and four to minus one then the reflection of l will be u5 so they are mirror images of each other they have the same structure we look the, at them as the same group and therefore we will say that u and 5 are isomorphic so this is the intuitive approach to introduce a uh, definition of two groups are to be isomorphic uh, the operations in u5 and l work exactly in the same way only the difference in the way the elements are labeled this is what what i just said so isomorphic groups we will call them when two groups have the same structure we call them isomorphic groups uh, and then we j we say g h and g are isomorphic now we want to give it a formal definition okay so to say that we mean relabeling means that every element in g this is what, what i just said between u5 and l is paired to a unique element in h okay in other words we can create a function going from g to h this is the labeling that assigns to every r in g and you label f of r in h okay now the relabeling i said it is a function and i mentioned it is one to one and on two and here are more explanations f from g to h must be must have the following properties distinct elements in g get distinct labels in h that is one to one if r does not equal r prime then f of r does not equal f prime so the function is taking g to h but taking different elements to different images that means if we find two elements here with the same image their images are equal then necessarily these two elements are the same in g so this is one to one part two every element in h is labeled with some element of g that means for each element in h there is an element r in g such that h equals f of r so f is going from g to h and every element in h labels some element in r every element of h has a pre-image this is what we wanted to say so we have these two conditions in order to say h and g have the same structure now to complete the story let me say we need to consider that what does this thing says let me make a graph for it it is this thing is very important now in algebra and you have seen it actually in linear transformations 
when you will study linear algebra you have seen linear transformations this is now this property is a generalization of linear transformations okay so let us assume here we have the group G and assume here this is the group H and we are assuming that a function is traveling from G to H now assume here we have an element A and in here we have an element B now uh, let's take the image of A here which has to be now which we call which must be called f of a and take the element of b, the image of b and it is f of b okay so now let's see what's happening okay now a and b are elements in the group so a star b is another element in the group right so i will say this is a star b good okay now f of a and f of b are elements in h and h is a group therefore i can make operation so this is f of a star f of b and the operation here is the h operation i may say and the star here is the g operation because the operations might be different operation of g might be addition operation of h might be multiplication okay now see what's happening here we either take the multiplication let me say of a and b then I get I get what so uh, let, let me make uh, let me call this uh, C element C okay so that I match with the notation in the book so what I am saying here I either take a star b and then take the image okay so I will go with red that way I took a star b and then I took the image of a star b the question now does that image equal this so this is one way take the two elements in the domain make an operation between them you get a new element c take the image of that would that be the same as the operation of the images so I will go in green and do the other way take the image of a first so don't do the operation between a and b just take the image of, of each one of them take the image of b okay now we got these two images make the operation between them and then we will reach the same element okay now if this is happening uh, we will call it homomorphism later but in order to preserve the structure to say that G the group G and the group H have the same structure such a map with such a property must exist now what we have done in here at the beginning I did a star B and then decided to take the image this is what I did here what I did here I took the images first I took the images and then I made the operation between them okay this operation is inside G this operation is of H and we must get equality which means in other way some people will say okay do you mean I will distribute F over A and then over B and then uh, change the operation to that of H then yes we you can we can describe it that way so we need the function to be one to one on two and enjoys this property so that we can say the group G and the group H have the same structure if such a function with these three properties exist okay 
And this table actually here and here, it explains what I did in graph. Uh, a star B equals C, then F of A star B is F of C, and F of A star F of B is F of C, same thing. And I put this in a blue box, and this is the property we want. F of A star B equals F of A star F of B. And I would like it to say it, would like to say it in words as following. The image of the operation of two elements is the same as the operation of the images of two elements. So I get two elements, make the operation, take the image, the, op the image of the operation of two elements is the same as the operation of the images of their images. Okay, this is a homomorphism. So good. Now we give a formal definition of isomorphism. A group G and H uh, are said to be isomorphic. Or, uh, sorry, it's uh, okay, yes. Uh, group G and H are said to be isomorphic. And written this way. If there is a function F from G to H, which is injective, surjective, and enjoys this property. And this function is called isomorphism. Good. So G, H, there's a function traveling between them. What does the function do? It connects every element here to every element here. And every element in the codomain is connected. It, it, it is onto. The function is onto. And enjoys this property. If that's happening, then these two groups have essentially have the same structure, the same structure. They, they enjoy the same properties a lot. Uh, what, what are these properties? We will say some of them. Okay. And we, will, we might say that F preserves the operation. And uh, here I just said the operation might be addition or multiplication or something else, something else like uh, a composition of functions. Uh, let's see. Now here, uh, if uh, G and H are additive, like if we are traveling from G with addition, the function to the H with addition, then we will say F of A plus B is F of A plus F of B. Here it says if uh, H, uh, G is multiplication, the operation of G multiplication, and here also the operation of H is multiplication, then we will say F of A, B equals F of A times F of B. Here, maybe the uh, operation of G is addition and the operation of H is multiplication. Now notice that we distributed F over A and B, but the operation is changed now to multiplication. The operation of the group in the, in the range. And in here we might have uh, G to B multiplication and H, the operation of H is addition. So we are changing F of A times B to F of A plus F of B. So we change the operation according to the group uh, in the domain. Uh, uh, starting from the operation of the group in the domain and changing it to the operation of the group in the range. Okay, now we will start seeing uh, uh, examples for isomorphisms. The multiplicative group U8 uh, of the units of in Z8 is isomorphic to Z2 cross Z2. And to prove that, we need to uh, uh, define an isomorphism from U8 to Z2 cross Z2. Now, I can leave you and uh, ask, Okay, you create that uh, isomorphism. We have four elements in U8 and four elements in Z2 cross Z2. So just keep trying. Uh, send 0, 0 to, uh, uh, sorry, was send 1 to 0, 0 for some reason. Why? Because 1 is the identity of U8. Okay, we are saying the groups have the same structure. If you start with element and label it with another element here, they must have the same structure. So that necessarily means if this is the identity, then this one must be the identity. So the identity of U8 is one and the identity of Z2 cross Z2 is zero, zero. Okay, now we send three to one, uh, zero. Uh, think about that. What is the order of three inside U8? It's two, 
Yes, uh, actually order of every element there is two. So okay, let's keep going. And the order of three is two in, in U8, and the order of one zero also is two in Z2 cross Z2. Send five to zero one and send seven to one one. Now the idea here uh, uh, we, we can just prove that function is one to one surjective and it preserves the operation f of a star b equals f of a star f of b how we prove such a thing we can do a table uh, of operation as we did for uh, u5 and l the, the, the example we started with these are two finite and small groups of a small order so we can do a table of operation for each of them and show that uh, this relay pilling will uh, uh, relay pilling one with zero zero and uh, three with one zero five with zero one and seven with one one in the table of u8 just to ch change these elements to uh, their new labels and then you will find that yourself that you got the operation table of z2 cross z2 which means we have isomorphism which means uh, this happens this part happening is happening here okay now just to have fun uh, let's uh, uh, three let's have three uh, times five this is serves as a and this is serve as b okay and uh, let's see uh, f of three times five is it the same as f of three now what is the operation here is addition right f5 is it true let's have fun with that 3 times 5 is 15 which is a new 8 7 so we have here f of 7 okay is it the same as what is f of 3 1 0 and f of 5 is 0 1 and uh, it's correct f of 7 here here it is is 1 1 equals one zero so okay got we got it for uh, this specific example three times five you may repeat that with one times three one times seven one times five uh, and three times five three times seven and five times seven then you would you took all the possible operations in u8 and you prove the distribution such a thing uh, for f is happening for every one of them then you are done then you prove that f enjoys this the third property of the definition of isomorphisms and uh, therefore we will say that uh, u8 is isomorphic uh, to uh, and we will write that u8 is isomorphic to z2 cross z2 okay and here we go this is actually the table now relabel uh, as we said here now go to this table here and relabel every element with its corresponding image you will find yourself got this table which proves they have the same structure despite the operations are different in u8 the operation is multiplication and in z2 cross z2 the operation is addition component wise addition Okay, let's see another example of uh, isomorphism. We will send uh, z to the even integers e. And here I would like to, to write it uh, f going from z to 2 times z. And the, the function is defined take an integer and just multiply it by 2. Now, this integer, this function is uh, injective and uh, you can easily prove that and it is surjective and also you can easily prove that and we want to show in it enjoys the uh, third property so let's take f of a plus b now the addition is plus in both groups so that means uh, it is 2 times a plus b and that means it is 2a plus 2b but 2a is f of a and 2b is f of b so we got from here to here so that means uh, the third property uh, 
uh, has been achieved so one two and three and that means uh, f is isomorphism indeed now exercise for you exercise repeat that thing I mean uh, uh, prove that z is always isomorphic to n z and this is for any n greater than or equal one if it is one it is the same thing so here in the particular z is isomorphic to 3 z and you prove it in the very same way but changing 2 to 3 uh, z is isomorphic to 4 z and so on uh, so you need to prove that and the function uh, and the proof is the very same thing as here just uh, wherever you see a2 replace it by n but you need to do it by hand and work the injective and surjective uh, by details okay so z is isomorphic to n z now another example this function takes f which takes r now when we say r is a group then we mean the operation is addition right because it is not a group under multiplication because zero does not have inverse r star is a group under multiplication which means the non-zero real numbers but this is different and uh, this takes to r double star and we have seen this r double star which is the uh, positive real numbers the positive real numbers and the uh, operation here is multiplication and uh, the map takes a real number and the image of that real number, number is uh, 10 to power r this is exponential function and if you want to have idea what's going on here exponential function goes that way and goes to zero it keeps going here when x when r going to negative infinity is going to zero and this grows to infinity now notice here zero has no pre-image but all real numbers in the y-axis uh, has images corresponding images in the curve and you can see now from your previous information from calculus that this function is one to one on indeed right because it is strictly increasing and it is on two it is on two why any element here you will find a pre-image for it so if we have y here you can tell that uh, what is the pre-image of uh, uh, of y okay so let's see uh, is f is in, uh, injective let's see f uh, is injective how do we know that let us assume that f of r1 equals f of r2 that means 10 to power r1 equals 10 to power r2 can we uh, conclude that uh, r1 equals r2 if we take the log 2 base 10 uh, of 10 are uh, that means uh, k take because these two values are equal take the log of them then you will get uh, equality but the first one this is r1 and this is r2 so you already know that what this means so we assumed f of r1 equals f of r2 and we proved r1 equals r2 now to prove f is surjective F is surjective so we will choose any element any uh, non-zero uh, any positive real number so uh, let y belongs to r double star positive real number uh, then we want to find an r a real number whose image is y now uh, let r equals what So uh, okay, so what what do we take R? So 
so uh, log y if we do that what we get then f of r equals which is f of log y which means 10 to power log y and this equals y correct you know that already right okay so for every y in r double star we found uh, a pre-image for it which is log y itself okay so what's left to complete uh, the proof we will show that uh, f of a and f of b uh, equals f of a times f of b let, let, let's see f of uh, a b belongs uh, they are real numbers and uh, here we will have addition Okay, so again, let me write it here. A, B belongs to R. Now, F of A plus B equals 10 to power A plus B, according to the definition of F. And this is 10 to power A, 10 to power B, but this is F of A, here is multiplication, times F of B and then we got that so f is an isomorphism okay Okay, one more example. Two finite groups with different numbers of elements cannot be isomorphic. Uh, if we have finite groups, say this is a group that has uh, a number of elements, say R elements. R elements. And another group that has S elements. And let's assume that R is greater than S. So we are saying different different numbers of elements. So one of them has more elements than the other. Now, can we define the one-to-one -one function between them? Like if we send this to this, then this to this, and so on. And then we will find these two elements are left without pre-images. So, but, but we have to send them somewhere. So we are forced to choose the function to be not one-to-one. -one. So any function goes between uh, to uh, sets finite set that does not have do not have the same order then it, it is either not one to one as this is the case or in two it is not one to one if the number of elements in the domain is more than the number of elements in the range and it is not one not on two when the number of element in the range in the domain is less than the number of element in the range so we cannot have a one to one and in two function between uh, sets with different elements, finite sets with different number of elements. For example, Z5 and Z10 will never be isomorphic. Remember the very uh, uh, catastrophic mistake that I warned you about. You might think uh, Z5 is subset or subgroup of Z10 and I said, be careful, they have nothing to do with each other. They have nothing to do with each other. They have different uh, uh, operations and they live in different worlds. The one in Z5 is different than the one in Z10. In Z5, it means uh, all integers whose uh, remainders after dividing by 5 is 1, and those are different than the integers whose remainder after dividing by 10 is 1, which is the equivalence class in Z10 of 1. Okay. 
Now, uh, uh, groups with finite groups with different numbers uh, cannot be isomorphic. So, different orders. So, what about uh, groups that have the same order? Shall they be isomorphic? The answer is not. This is S3 and Z6. Uh, each of them has order 6, but they are not isomorphic. Uh, to for the two for two groups to be isomorphic they must have the same structure but s3 is not abelian s6 z6 is abelian so they cannot they cannot be isomorphic they, they have they have different structures one of them is abelian the other is not so in general we are seeing here if g is abelian and h is non abelian then G and H are not, cannot be isomorphic. A non-abelian group, in no way, it can be isomorphic to an abelian group. And the proof of this thing is easy, and I will let you to uh, to work it out in details. Okay, now, uh, the first example above says uh, groups with different orders never isomorphic. A second example says, okay, there are uh, groups of the same order, are they, are they isomorphic? We, then we say, no, one of them is a B and one of them is the other. And then one may ask, well, okay, let's bring two finite groups that have the same order and each of them is abelian. Are they isomorphic? And this example now says even that, no, it might not be isomorphic. And here we have uh, an example of that. So we have two additive groups. This is uh, uh, Z4 and Z cross Z2. Each of them is abelian. So we have uh, two abelian groups and they have the same order. But still they are not isomorphic. They are not isomorphic. Intuitively think about it. Uh, Z4 is cyclic. One can generate the whole group, right? So one, 1 to power 0 is 1. one uh, power here means addition. 1 square is 1 plus 1, which is uh, 2. And 1 gives itself. And 1 to power 3 is 1 plus 1 plus 1, 3. 1 to power 4 is 0. Is 1 added to itself 4 times. So uh, Z4, Z4 is generated by one element. It is cyclic. So this is the structure of Z4. If you go to Z2 cross Z2, Z2 cross Z2, the elements are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Okay? Take any one of them and keep adding it to itself. You will never get the whole Z2 cross Z2. Actually, every element in Z2 cross Z2 has order 2, every non-identity element. So let me write that. We have 0, 0, uh, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. Add, add any element to itself as many times as you want. 0, 0 gives nothing. It, it itself. 0, 1, add it to itself, you get 0, 0. So 0, 1 has order 2. 1, 0, same thing, has order 2. 1, 1, add it to itself, you get 0, 0. So every element of these has order 2. Okay? But Z4 has an element which has order 4, which is 1. So, okay, I got an element in some group which has order 4, even one element. But the other group has no element of that order. So, they, have, they don't have the same structure. So, they are not isomorphic. So, this is one of the things that need, we need to look to decide whether two groups are isomorphic. First thing we decided, they must have the same number of elements. Second thing, we decided that uh, there must be two abelian or two non-abelian groups, okay? Both of them are abelian or both of them are non-abelian groups. And second thing that some elements had some order, we must, have, we must find uh, same element in the other group, which, might be the, which shall be the image of the first one. So this one has an order uh, of some number, and then we must find the corresponding element in the other group having the same order. In general, if we have like three elements in this group with order or something, then we must have exactly the same number of elements, three elements in this group with the same order. And the, these three elements in here are corresponding for each other, are labeling for each, for each other via the isomorphism. 
So, okay, so uh, this cannot uh, be uh, isomorphic groups. And what, reason, what is the reason we shall say? Just uh, explain what I said in here. Just write what I said. There is a, an element in Z4, Z4 is cyclic, but Z2 cross Z2 is not cyclic. This is an enough answer to say that there is, they are not isomorphic. Z4 contains an element of order 4, but Z2 cross Z2 does not contain element of order 4. This is another reason for saying they are not isomorphic. So write what I said here down. So uh, another uh, conclusion here, if F is an isomorphism, then A and F of A must have same order. Okay, now if I want to move a map from Z4 to Z2 cross Z2, okay, then I will take the element F of 1, so the F goes from here to here. Where shall I send 1? Where? It says A and F of A have the same order, right? So I shall send 1 to some element that has order 4 because one has order 4 but there is no such element then I cannot define an isomorphism I cannot okay so definition a group G is uh, if a group uh, G is a group then uh, an isomorphism from G to G itself we keep saying from G to H H might be the same as G so the isomorphism goes from G to G it happens uh, then we will call it automorphism. Automorphism. Uh, an example for that is the identity. This is the identity of G that sends G to G, and it sends every element to itself. Just it does nothing. Uh, I G of R is R. So identity is an automorphism. It is one to one and two, and uh, it is indeed uh, satisfy the third property. And let's see another example uh, of an automorphism. Let's see be any element fixed. So we are we start with uh, G and fix. Just take an element, fix it. So stay on it. So we had we have element C in hand. What do we do with it? Send an element from G to G by doing what? Take an element from G and, and do, uh, multiply it, do it this way. So it's always better to demonstrate that uh, in graphs. So F is going to G, from G to G and we have C fixed. So we will take a small element G, an element small G, and F will send that to what? To C inverse. G C okay now this sends G to itself is it one to one is it in two and does it preserve the operation uh, let's see is it one to one F is injective let's prove it so assume we have F, F of A equals F of B that means what is F of A C inverse uh, A uh, C and F of B is C inverse B C now uh, multiply both sides from the left by C we get a C equals B C and we are in a group two, so we can do constellation that means a equal B so we start with F of a equals F of B we ended with a equals B so F is one to one F is surjective let uh, G belongs to the group so we want to show that any element here has a pre-image now we choose so say we have an element uh, okay we can say it, it I don't want you don't want to use G in here and in here uh, so I will say uh, let's say this is Y okay so I want I want to find some element that takes me to Y and that some element will be simply just C, Y, C inverse. Y and C are in the group. And so C inverse is in the group. So the multiplication C, Y, C inverse is an element in the group. So I will use it. So uh, I will say here, consider F of C, Y, C inverse. And according to the definition, it is C inverse, C, Y, C inverse 
times C and do the work with constellation it you will get Y so this indeed goes to Y so it is surjective now we need to prove the third property f of a b is the same as uh, the image is c inverse a b c now we will say okay this is c inverse a i will multiply by c and c inverse then i change nothing right this is identity now i will use associativity this means c inverse a c and the c inverse b c and this is f of a times f of b so f of a times b is f of a times f of b so therefore uh, and this gives f is an isomorphism but f is going from g to itself so it is actually auto more of G so this is an example of automorphism okay now this group is very fundamental this theorem sorry is very fundamental in uh, algebra it talks about cyclic groups any cyclic group is either Z or Zn for some n. This is just simply any cyclic group in the world. It is either have the same structure as Z or have the same structure as Zn for some n. Maybe Z2 or Z3 or Z5. So if you find cyclic group somewhere, it is one of these Z or Zn. If it is infinite, then it is Z. When I say it is Z, I mean it is isomorphic to Z. Isomorphic means for us is the same, the same structure. So if G is infinite, then G is isomorphic to Z. G is isomorphic. Did I use the three uh, Z? Uh, isomorphic is written this way, right? Okay. And if G is finite, that means it has an order n. Then in this uh, case, G is isomorphic to Zn okay and how we prove that uh, let me move this uh, side and I will give you the idea of the proof and you will write it in details clearly by your own and it is in the book you, you can just summarize that so I will give the, give you the idea now G is uh, infinite and cyclic that means uh, g is generated by some a for some a uh, that means so uh, there is a belongs to g such that uh, a generates g but what does that mean what, what is this group is what is this set is is a to power 0 which is the identity a to power 1 a to power 2 and the power here might mean addition or or multiplication and so on and here it is a to power negative 1 which is the inverse inverse square inverse to power 3 inverse to power 4 and so on now we want to show that g is isomorphic to z do you see z there now what if you take this element to 0 and this element to 1 take the power only this is simple relabel this element with their powers this is negative 1 negative 2 negative 3 negative 4 so what would you define the the isomorphism from g to z by any element in G has this form a to power k right so the image of any element is just simply k this k take the power okay now this this uh, function is adjective and surjective and it is uh, it satisfies the third property you can prove it right 
uh, f a to power i f of a to power i this is this is very very uh, very simple but this is i and uh, uh, i just proved uh, uh, what, what did i prove is that uh, one to one uh, if the image is of two then okay i'm sending uh, okay <laughs> If I want to prove the, I, I just switched it around. To prove it is uh, one to one, I will say um, yes. I did. Why? 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 Okay. Sometimes doing something very easy <laughs> uh, gets difficult. <laughs> okay. I equals j. Stop. 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 Okay, stop. Stop. Wow. Uh, okay. Can I start now? Yeah. Okay. Now. That means i equals j. That means a to power i equals a to power j. And then we are done. It is it is one to one. Uh, what about surjective? Uh, surjective means take any integer k and z. Uh, then f of a to power k is gives you k back. So it's easy. Uh, so okay, let me say here f is injective. What about surjective? And then you do it by your own just write it down clearly what's about f of uh, uh, a to power i a to power g it is simply f of a to power i plus g and this is according to the function i plus g but i is a to power i and g is f of a to power g so i got uh, this from here to here which I means I distributed f over these things, but I changed the operation from addition to multiplication to addition. Okay, so it is uh, f is an isomorphism. So we prove that if g is infinite and it is cyclic, then it is uh, isomorphic to z. Z is addition. Z will addition. Okay, what's about uh, the second part? If G is cyclic and it is finite, the second part G is uh, cyclic and has finite order n. That means then there exists element a belongs to g uh, such that g is generated by a now a has order n and the order of a is n that means g is a to power 0 which is identity a to power 1 a to power 2 and then we keep going all the way till a to power n minus 1 now a to power n is the identity again now okay now send this to 0 send this to uh, 1 to the powers here send this to 2 and send this to n minus 1 now when we do that then what this thing is if we take equivalence classes then we got the n right and in the same way we have done it for part one you can prove this map f sending g to the n by doing what f of uh, a to power k send it to where to k modulo n which means send it to the equivalence class of k now i will leave it to you to show uh, this map is isomorphism then f is an isomorphism okay and uh, this gives g is isomorphic to zn but let me uh, make sure uh, by doing uh, by choosing what if uh, okay z generated by a same thing uh, 
okay, and order g to equals n. We, I'm assuming the same thing we have there, but I want to choose uh, z n to be z5. Okay, now my question, where you send a to power a to power 27? Where you send it? It's 27 modulo 5, which is 2. So you send it to the covalence class of 2. Okay. So, okay. Any infinite cyclic group is essentially isomorphic to Z. And any finite cyclic group of order N is isomorphic to Zn. Good. Now, the definition of homomorphism. Actually, uh, almost uh, uh, all books of algebra introduces homomorphism first, and then introduces isomorphism. But the book we are using here did the opposite thing. Uh, now we will go for homomorphism. It, just, it is just uh, a map that satisfies uh, this property, the third the property of the definition of isomorphism. Just distributing f over the elements uh, or over the operation so the image of the operation of two elements is the same as the operation of the of their images only we need that thing we we we're not saying here f need to be injective or f need to be surjective we are not assuming that only this property if it happens then we will say that f from g to h this function is a homomorphism homomorphism so every isomorphism is a homomorphism correct but not every homomorphism is an isomorphism and we will see uh, examples for that okay so this is the definition of homomorphism and we will see some examples so so a map is a homomorphism if it is uh, if it satisfies only the third uh, property of isomorphism. So every isomorphism is a homomorphism, but the opposite is not true. And uh, this is an example for that. A function from the uh, non-zero real numbers to the non-zero real numbers f of x equal x square is a homomorphism. Why? Uh, f of a b is a b all square which is a square b square which is f of a f of b so it is a homomorphism indeed but it is not uh, not an isomorphism because uh, it is uh, not uh, uh, not uh, inject not an injective it's not an injective function this is i uh, simply because f of negative 1 is the same as f of 1. You know x square, f of x equal x square is not injective. What's about a function from z to z5 given by f of a equals f of i? I just mentioned an example here. For example, f of 113 is the equivalence class of 3, right? Okay, so it is a, a, a homomorphism. But indeed, it is not one to one because this is the same as of uh, as f of eight. So eight and thirteen has the same uh, image. So this is not uh, injective. It is not injective, but it is a uh, homomorphism. F of a plus b is the equivalence class of a plus b, and we learned uh, moving from here to here is uh, is true. And this is f of a, this is f of b. So these are uh, two examples of uh, a homomorphism which is not uh, an isomorphism. And here is uh, one more example. Uh, function uh, from g cross h, these are groups to g, uh, taking uh, an ordered pair and then giving the first coordinate. So this is the projection f of uh, x, y, will give you only the the first uh, the first component so this is we call it projection uh, into the first component and it is uh, a homomorphism and it is surjective but it is not uh, one to one it's not one to one uh, if uh, if h is not the identity uh, means h uh, contains more than the identity uh, then uh, h is 
sorry then uh, f is not not injective because two ordered pairs x uh, c x1 y and x2 uh, y sorry uh, i will see uh, it is not uh, injective okay i will say x1 x y1 x uh, y2 so uh, if we have more than one element in h or x y1 and x y2 are not uh, the same element but their image is is x the first coordinate so it's not one to one uh, if you are required to write that do it do it in details uh, and okay now um, here is a, a, a important note and then theorem which says talks about the image of a group okay I'm waiting the whiteboard to move too much okay now if we have a function in general function going from G to H uh, so the image of G, the image of the whole domain is I may say f of G, this is the same as f of G so uh, the image uh, just simply I would like to write f of small g where g is any element in the domain okay so if I want to represent that in a graph this is g this is h and f goes from g to h now taking the whole g and the ref it might be some subset proper subset so this is f of g it might be the whole set h in such a case h is uh, f is uh, surjective and it might be just a subset inside h okay now in this theorem we will say that uh, the image of h is subgroup this subset here so let me make it clear this is the image of G f of G this image here is a subgroup of H okay and uh, to reach to, uh, to that uh, we need to prove the first two parts which is this one and this one but let me continue see uh, now going from here to here to this part only give us a map which is surjective because we are assuming that uh, our codomain is is here so moving g to f of g give us a surjective map so if that map f is injective injective so moving here to here is injective and we have surjective then this will be isomorphism assuming f is injective and this gives the first part so okay uh, these uh, two four parts are uh, very basic and uh, very important we need to prove them to prove part one we just will simply see now to prove this in this side here we will see uh, f of uh, eg is the identity of uh, g f of eg times f of eg this is E of G uh, because we have a homomorphism we are assuming that we are having a homomorphism is F of EG and EG okay and uh, this is uh, F of EG because identity multiplied by itself gives the identity and now this is an element inside H correct so if we multiply it by the identity of H then we change nothing now look what happened here and here now if we do constellation this element is the same as this element do constellation and then we will conclude that uh, f of identity of G is the identity of H and then we are done with the first part 
Now to prove the second part, I'm waiting the whiteboard to move again. Okay, to prove the second part, this one here, let's see. Let's multiply f of a inverse. The second part says the image of the inverse is the inverse of the image. So it's simply saying that the image of the inverse is the inverse of the image. Okay, so this is the image what is its inverse let's multiply and see since f is a homomorphism then we have we can do this and a inverse is the identity of uh, g so we have f of the identity of g which is the identity of h by part one so what we got here we multiplied the inverse with this element and then we got the identity and this gives us that the inverse of this is that. Correct? So what I, what I am seeing here, we multiplied this element with what? With this, and then we got the inverse. So the inverse, the, the identity, sorry. So the inverse of this, this element is what we multiplied it with, and then we got the identity, is that. Okay, now let's prove part three, which says the image of H is a subgroup. <clears throat> so again, uh, part three says uh, F of G is a subgroup of H. Okay, so to prove it is a subgroup, notice that the identity, so again, f of g is f of g, uh, lives inside, inside h, and we want to prove it is a subgroup of h. So the identity of h is the image of the identity of g, this is the identity of g, but the identity of g lives inside g, so this belongs to f of g. So we got the first part. The identity is in there. Now let's prove the closure. Let y1, y2 belongs to f of g. This means uh, y1 is an image of some element. And y2 also is an image of some elements where these elements are coming from y1 and y2 are images of g so uh, x1 and x2 belongs to g okay now we want to see y1 times y2 so we have we have that and we want the multiplication to belong to f of g that's what we want to show. Consider now y1 times y2 equals equals what? f of x1 times f of x2. But f is an homo a homomorphism, so this is f of x1 times x2. But x1, x2, their multiplication is in the group because x1 and x2 are in the group and g is closed. So this belongs indeed to f of g, and then we are done. So we proved one, two. Now what's about three? We want to show uh, every element in here, say y belongs to f of g. We want to show uh, its inverse is in there. Uh, but note, uh, uh, y equals f of x for some x that's why y is in f of g and that means uh, y inverse 
is f of x inverse by bar 2 but uh, by bar 2 this means f of x inverse here uh, x belongs to g right and that means x inverse belongs to g so this is x inverse belongs to g so its image is inside f of g so we got y inverse is inside f of g and then we are done and that gives uh, f of g is a subgroup of h it is written up there anyway okay now the third part the last part uh, which is uh, all of them are important actually especially part two which is that the image of a group is a subgroup in the codomain provided that uh, f is uh, a homomorphism now this is uh, important now it says if f is injective then g is isomorphic to its image okay so i already uh, made a graph for that so g is injective and it is homomorphism so we only need to to show we need to show nothing actually it's injective uh, and it is a homomorphism uh, going from taking g to f of g so taking the whole g to here now it is injective like if we define uh, to make it easy define h from g to f of g only okay by what h of a small g simply it is f of g so h is surjective correct and it is injective because f is injective and it is a homomorphism because uh, uh, f is homomorphism and that means h is an isomorphism okay so h is an isomorphism and gives this is true so g is isomorphic to uh, itself now uh, i will leave you i always a lot of time i will leave you the trivial details for you to do so h is homomorphism uh, you need uh, to do it to work it out like you need to prove h of uh, a b equals f of a uh, h of a times h of p it is just very simple use this it is f of a times f of b but f is a homomorphism so it is f of a times f of b uh, so it's easy very trivial just writing but at home you must do all these things in detail so okay uh, we proved the theorem and remember uh, uh, its parts the image of the identity is the identity the image of the inverse is the inverse of the image uh, the image of the group is a subgroup in the codomain uh, the group is isomorphic to itself whenever the homomorphism is injective okay now the last two theorems here and this theorem is a very famous uh, Kähler's theorem and actually the study of the groups uh, was originated with working with permutations every group actually every group in in the world every group in the existence every existed group is isomorphic to uh, some groups group of permutation this is what Kerr's theorem says every group every group, whatever group you have cyclic not cyclic infinite finite anything it is isomorphic to a group of permutation okay and we will prove it the proof is uh, very interesting uh, but first let us uh, go to corollary 7.22 which is direct consequence of Kerr's theorem uh, and uh, prove it for quick it says every finite group of order n is isomorphic to subgroup of sn 
every finite group. And the idea here, uh, G is isomorphic to a subgroup of A of G. What do I mean by A of G? I mean all the permutations from G to G. How do we know that? Now we are using this theorem. In this theorem, Keller's theorem says every group is isomorphic to a subgroup of the group of permutations of G itself. Okay? But since G is finite, has a finite order, then uh, this thing, let me write it this way, is isomorphic to Sn. So we got G is isomorphic to a subgroup of Sn. So G, this gives, G is isomorphic to a subgroup of Sn. So this is the quick proof of uh, this corollary using this theorem. And you might not feel comfortable for this, but we will see it now when we uh, prove uh, Keller's theorem. So let's prove it. Every group is isomorphic to a group of permutation. Okay, again, I'm waiting uh, this to move. Okay. So, proof of Keller's theorem. In fact, what we will do, let's see, let, let G be a group. Well, a group means a set. Okay? A group means a set. Set. So, I will take all permutations of that set, which means what is a permutation of a set? is a one-to-one -one and unto map from the set to itself okay so i will take here let me make a graph for it here like that what is this thing i will call it a of g so what is a of g this is the set of all bijections bijections the set of all bijections bijection come on move please Come on, I wanted to move. This is uh, oof. the set of all bijections from G to, let me say, to G to itself. All possible bijections from G to G. We call this A of G. Okay? Now assume we have a group G. Let me go back to black. This is the group G. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do now, we want to specify some subgroup sub inside A of G. And we take G to that one. Okay. And uh, how, what we do? We take an element here, A in G, and we will send it to some element here, which we call Phi of A. Okay? Every element in G will be sent to Phi of A. What is Phi of A? Phi of A is an element in A of G, which means Phi of A must be a pair mutation of G, which means phi of A is a bijection from G to itself. 
and how this phi of a is defined phi of a remember a is an element of g and phi of a is a function from g to g a bijection we want to prove it is a bijection how it is defined phi of a equals a of x so it takes x from g and it send it to another element in g which is simply just multiply a by x okay so we started with an element of g and we used it to define a bijection from g to itself and the way we define that bijection which is phi of a phi sub a is by saying phi sub a of x equals a of x and I just here wrote I did not write clearly here so let me fix it phi of a of x is uh, phi sub a of x is a of x and I'm, I'm waiting the whiteboard to respond to me please okay can I write now why the whiteboard is going too slow okay so okay now thank you yes phi sub a of x okay is f x and i will leave it for you to prove this is indeed a bijection This is indeed a bijection. Okay. From G to itself. And it is easy for you to prove. It is very easy actually. Okay. You will use the constellation law in the group. But remember you are in the group. In a group. And A is an element in the group. And it has A inverse whenever you need to use it. Okay. So this is left as exercise for you so now what we are doing we taking the whole g to the set of permutations defined by the elements of g so to make things clear we might assume we have an element another element b in g then we will take it to phi sub b and so on and phi sub b of x is equals b times x and we will call the function that doing this for us f so define f from uh, g to a of g so it takes an element of the group g and use it to define a bijection from g to g okay so take an element F takes an element of G and gives you a bijection. Do you see that? F takes elements. It gives you functions. <laughs> okay, bijections. And now we want to show this is injective and homomorphism. once we show it is injective and the homomorphism then we use the theorem we just proved and we will say g is isomorphic to its image right and this is the image of g under f this is f of g so g will be isomorphic to f of g and f of g is a subgroup so we will use the last two parts of the theorems that we already proved okay now we want to show f is injective and f it is a homomorphism to show f is injective so assume f of e is the same as f of b that means phi of a is the same as phi of b but remember phi of a and phi of b are functions from g to g and they are the same these functions that means when i apply 
this function to the identity of G and apply this function to the identity of G I must get equality but what is this thing this is a times E and what is this thing a times B and they are equal so this is B times identity B times identity according to the definition and they are equal so a equals B so what we started with f of a equals f of b and then we ended with a equals b so f is on 2 so f is sorry is injective now let's prove as f is homomorphism before we prove f is homomorphism this is abbreviation of homomorphism we want to do something here uh, notice that f of a b you know a is element b is element in g then a times b is another element so we can define phi of that another element okay so f of a of b of x equals a b x according to the definition and f of a compose so phi sorry phi of a compares phi of b of x what does it equal it equals phi of a of phi sub b of x and this equals phi of a what is phi sub b is bx and this equals now a times that okay and so these things are equal which means these two things are equal so here we got phi of a b of x phi sub a b of x is the same as phi sub a compose phi sub b of x or just simply phi sub a b is the same as phi of a phi sub a compose phi uh, sub b and this is x okay now we will use this to prove uh, f is a homomorphism and I'm waiting the whiteboard to move again that's happening okay okay now f is a homomorphism let's see f of a times b is the say is f by the definition okay f sub a b but this is f sub a compose f sub b but uh, this is uh, what this thing is f of a compose f of b so good we are done so let me write it in one line f of a b so between them is the operation of g and in here f of a compose f of b between them is the operation of a of g because we live inside the permutations so they are equal so f is a homomorphism now what we got f is a homomorphism and it is injective so g is isomorphic to its image by uh, part four of the theorem we just proved so where, where we are now okay so i go back here to these things actually I go back here now okay what we what we have proved f is injective and it is a homomorphism and f is going from here to here so that means uh, we will conclude uh, G is isomorphic to its image okay and its image is a subgroup of a G because we have seen an image of a function an image of a homomorphism is a 
Asobi group of the Kodomin. And uh, uh, I, I always write the conclusion without referring to what we used here. Now, uh, if we go back and see how we conclude this, this is uh, by uh, part uh, four of the previous theorem and how we got this this is by part 3 of the previous theorem Okay, and this explains the proof, and it is left to you to prove uh, phi sub A is a projection. And uh, this is the end of today's lecture.